Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk, we're going to do another book review. Um, today we're going to talk about The Dead Guy Next Door, a Riley Thorne novel by Lucy Score. Alright, so excuse me. Today has not gone the way that I wanted it to go, so I apologize for the lighting and my hair, all of it. Just, we're going to disregard everything. Let me go ahead and read the back of the book and then we will get to talking about it. A nice normal life. Is that too much to ask? For Riley Thorne, it is. Oh my god. <sighs> Divorced. Broke. Living with a pack of elderly roommates. And those hallucinations Riley's diligently ignoring? Her mom is convinced Riley must be clairvoyant. Just when things seem like they can't get worse, a so-hot-he-should-be-illegal private investigator shows up on her doorstep looking for the guy next door, who turns up murdered. Investigator Nick Santiago doesn't play well with others. He's a rebel, a black sheep, a man who prefers a buffet of options to being stuck with the same entree every night if you catch his drift. I don't catch the drift at all. But when the pretty, possibly psychic Riley lands at the top of the suspect list for this murder, Nick immediately volunteers to find out who done it. He likes solving mysteries. It has nothing to do with wanting to flex his heroic muscles for Riley. At least, that's what he's trying to convince himself. Nick and Riley must join forces to find out who really pulled the trigger, all while keeping a by-the-book, grudge-holding detective at bay and dealing with the gorgeous stranger claiming he's arrived to help Riley hone her psychic gifts. All before the killer decides to turn his sights on Riley. So, after I yell again, um, let's see. This book was first published in 2020, and then again in 2024. It has uh, 60 chapters plus an epilogue and 460 pages. It's it's she thick, she thick. Okay, and she's got the kind of pages that would be like on a, like a word find book. They're not like ordinary book pages. I don't know how to explain it. They're, they're like just slightly thinner. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying like that it's, it's a little bit different. Um, she thick. Uh, all right. So I try not to give out too many reviews in my book review videos, but I do also review books on my blog. So if you want to know more than what I say in this video, Please go check out my blog. It is on my website, beautifullyfearless.com. My eyes are watering a little bit, so I'm just making sure my makeup isn't running down my face. Okay. So, um, what I rated this book was five stars. Um, the readability was four out of five. Enjoyment was five out of five. Characters, five out of five. Setting, five out of five. Writing was four out of five. And plot was five out of five. There are a couple of things that... I don't even want to say we're like plot holes, but there, you know, there's just a couple of things that I think could be improved. Overall, though, I really like this book. Um, I will be getting the rest of the series and reading it. Um, I highly recommend this book if you like um, murder mysteries, if you like romance, if you kind of... Um, now, this book, it does have some spicy bits, but they're not detailed spicy bits. Um, it's more detailed when it comes to like the murder mystery and finding bodies and different things like that. Um, but this book, oh, oh, like overall, it's not the most descriptive book that I've ever read. So if you're squeamish um, around, you know, super descriptive things, I don't know that this book would would really affect you. Um, it does have some descriptions of, you know, dead bodies, of injuries, things like that. So just be warned. Um, and there is some spiciness to it, but it's not super detailed. Like it's one of those romance books where it kind of alludes to it, you know, like instead of using the exact words, it kind of, you know, like they, they became one while they lied together, while they lied together, whatever. Like, you know, they, they allude to it. It's not not directly said, like, in other books. And um, it's just, it's not as graphic. Graphic is the word I would use. Very, very good. Um, let's see. So the main character, her name is Riley Thorne. And she is a psychic, medium, clairvoyant. Um, from what we know, she has a vision. Um that her neighbor is going to die and she basically tries to stop him from getting shot as I think anybody would. I think any of us, if we had a vision that somebody in our lives was going to get shot or going to get killed, I think we would 
do the same and try to prevent that. Um, but she she fails and it's it's kind of hilarious how she fails because she has a vision so she's like on guard every night right and um she's watching through the the peephole in her door and she sees somebody at her neighbor's door and so she's like okay she goes and gets a hockey stick which i loved because not enough books have hockey sticks in them okay i'm, I'm a hockey girl all right um but she goes and gets a hockey stick and she's like going out and going after the guy and she like I can't remember exactly what happens, but she ends up slipping and falling down the stairs. And it turns out the person that was at the door was Nick, the private investigator. And she ends up tackling him in her PJs, by the way, in like tiny shorts and like a shirt and tumbling down the stairs. And then that whole commotion, like the whole the whole building wakes up and they're all like on alert. But Dickie's already been killed. The, the neighbor has already been killed. Um, the neighbor's name is Dickie Frick. Uh, a lot of interesting names in this book. Um, like Riley's mom's name is Blossom basil thorn and her sister is wander nancy dad's name is roger um her mom named her sister and her dad named her um it, it's just interesting you know the first time i read about blossom i actually thought it was riley's sister and i'm not quite sure why um but then her sister's name is wander nancy i i don't listen i don't know but um i will say that this book is a delightful little mix. It's a murder mystery. You have a woman who is kind of coming into her own at the same time. It's like a coming of age thing. You have somebody who she's kind of she's coming to terms with like who she really is and, and the gifts that she has and she's um she's learning how to I don't want to say learning how to use those gifts, but she's learning how to shut off those gifts. So instead of um you know just touching somebody and getting a vision she can kind of put up a wall in her mind so that she can touch people and she doesn't like immediately get visions or you know to hear dead people around her whatever um so you know it's kind of a, a coming of age thing she's i mean she's not a teenager she's on her own she's living you know by herself she has a job and all that stuff um but she still you know is in denial like the first time she gets a vision she convinces herself it was food sickness and i'm just sitting here reading this and i'm just like when have you ever gotten food sickness that caused like hallucinations like i don't know i'm sure there's some kind of foodborne illness that would cause hallucinations i mean you get sick enough you get dehydrated enough you know you go with enough without sleep you're gonna have hallucinations but you know i just i thought that was kind of funny along with her you know tackling nick down the stairs um so I, I, I thought that was kind of funny too because they're they like dance around each other right so they're like she thinks he's cute and he thinks she's cute but they pretend not to like each other you know what I mean you ever been in a relationship like that or you ever like had somebody in your life that you like you think is actually like really cute but you pretend not to like them or like you you don't want to like them but you know you just do and it's kind of that situation it, it's it's absolutely hilarious um there's a lot of twists and turns in the book um and I will say, like, who in the end is responsible for everything when it finally gets revealed? Like, who's responsible for it and kind of how things happened? It's, it's a little bit of a shock. Like, I think towards the middle, you kind of, if you, if you watch a lot of true crime or you read a lot of mysteries, you can kind of start putting pieces, you start guessing, right? Um, you know, oh, it's this person or it's that person or, you know, whatever. And it, it wasn't who I thought it was, let me just say. Um... Not until it was kind of more, I don't want to say it was outright said, but it was heavily inferred. So it was kind of like, kind of like pushed at you like this really might be the answer without saying that this is the answer. And it was, it's very interesting. Like it's, it's very twisty. You have, um, I will say this book has like some dirty cops in it. So the police force is letting things go um, because some of them know the person behind they are associated with the person who's ultimately behind everything, like the big boss, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, it's it's quite interesting. And Nick, who's a private investigator, he used to be a cop himself. Uh, but he just he found that he just didn't enjoy it as much, or the the, thing, the part, things about the job that he enjoyed um, was not things that he could continue to do, something like that. So that's when he, which happens a lot, by the way, you get a lot of cops who either retire or they find that, you know, being on the police force isn't for them, but they really, they go into like private investigating and they're very, very good at it. So, or like security, they're also very good at that. But um, I will say it's, you know, 
it's it's a very good book. It's very interesting. It really held my attention. It's a long book. Um, some of the chapters are incredibly long, but I have to say I really enjoyed it. And I will also tell you that this whole book, 490 pages, um, takes place within, uh, I believe, two weeks or seven days, 18 days. Um, and you have like chapter one, it says 9.50 p.m. Saturday, July 4th. And then chapter 13, you have 1.55 a.m. Sunday, June 21st. So you have kind of July 4th and it kind of goes goes back 18 days um, before then. But it's 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 a very good book. I do highly recommend. I don't think, um, I you know, for rating, you know, the readability was a little... I don't understand why I rated these this way, but I also agree with it. Like I can't, you know, if I can't give it five stars, then it automatically goes to four stars. Um, the writing, I think it could, could be better. I think, you know, some of the things could be switched around, could be phrased differently, could be um, written differently. But overall, it's a very good book. I'm excited to read more by Lucy Score. This is the first book that I've written, read by her, not written by her. Um, I mean, the book is written by her, but I didn't write it, that I didn't write, you know. Um, but I have to say, the characters are very well developed. By the end of the book, you really have a good sense of who Riley is, and she's starting to become more aware of who she is too. And Nick is, he's more of an adult. Like he, he kind of like knows who he is. He's just not sure what he wants out of life. And meeting Riley kind of brings things a little bit more into focus for him. So it's kind of, they're two people and they're on different spectrums as far as like maturity is concerned, um, which is weird because usually the female is more further along than the male. And she kind of is, but like I said, she's, she's coming of age. She's coming to terms with who she is and she's kind of embracing that instead of fighting it as hard as she has been and um it's it's very endearing they go through a lot together um the fact that she lives with with elderly people she's probably the youngest person in the building i think that is absolutely precious and it just the people the older people that she lives with too are so humorous like there's Fred who's a guy who is older than like his 70s or 80s and he does like yoga so I think Nick finds him one time and he has his legs up by his his uh behind his neck you know in like a like a pretzel like a human pretzel and Fred is like can you help me because his hip popped out a joint and he got stuck and he couldn't un-yoga himself and so it's just kind of funny because these are older people but they don't act like older people all the time you know you have one woman who is constantly talking about sex and wanting to know when they're having sex and telling you know about you know cute boys and things like that and then you have an older woman who is like a vigilante there's one time where she goes out and she um with another group with a group of people and they go and they release a bunch of dogs from a puppy mill so um they go out in the middle of the night and they release you know all these dogs so all these dogs are like running free and Riley takes her to this place and Riley she tells Riley to wait wait in the car you know to be the getaway driver and she's just like what are we doing you know Riley is just like what are we doing here she's a psychic but she you know there's she doesn't get visions all the time it's 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 quite interesting there's a lot of really humorous moments I really do um recommend this book I think it's 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 adorable it's it's heartwarming it's it checks most of the boxes like I said it's is it a five out of five no it's not for me no it's not um I prefer a little bit more graphicness when it comes to spicy scenes a little bit more graphicness when it comes to um violence um I'm not let, well I'm not opposed to that I wouldn't say I prefer stuff like that but that's something that for me I don't hate reading okay um and I can really get into. But I also, I write horror fiction, so I write that kind of stuff too. But this also has, like, her mom does tarot card readings. Um, so it's kind of being a psychic, kind of runs in her family, which is another reason her mom thinks that she's psychic, even though Riley's like, yeah, right, whatever. Um, but it's, it's a very good book. I do recommend it. Um, I really don't know what else to say because it really is pretty straightforward, you know. Um, you know, it's a murder mystery. Somebody dies and they have to figure out who did it and why. And it's kind of more like a maze because it's like, it's like a mob killing, right? So you have one person who actually goes in and will kill the person, but they're not the ones that wanted that person dead. Like they, the kill was ordered by somebody else. 
and this other person also has connections with all these other people who help maybe cover it up or who help get rid of evidence or whatever it is so it's it's very intertwined and I think that you will really enjoy it and I will say that uh, it's probably if you read this book it's probably not who you you are thinking that it is it's probably not who you think that it is because it wasn't for me it wasn't until I I mean you have a couple different theories right and you're like oh well I bet I bet but then you know it's kind of more hinted at and also it's like you know you just get that spidey sense so anyway I rated this uh five out of five overall five out of five I really enjoyed this book I can't wait to read the rest of the series um, and I will say that every time somebody asked me what I was reading when I was reading this book and I tried to tell them, I tried to shorten the version because this book, this is so complex. Like, okay, well, there's this girl, Riley, and she finds this dead guy next door, but oh, she's a psychic and she foresees him dying. So then she tries to stop him killing, but then stop him from getting killed. But then there's this Nick Santiago, this private investigator who gets involved and then they get involved in it. It's the storyline is, is kind of complex. Um, when you think about it that way. So when people ask, you know, what I'm reading, I kind of say, well, you know, her neighbor dies and she has to figure out who done it, which is the basic, you know. And um, people are like, oh, that should be a movie. That'd be a really funny movie. So I, I highly, I concur. I think it would be a very, very hilarious movie, even more if Melissa McCarthy played Riley or any one of the elderly people that live there. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Too. Anyway. Let me know if you have read this book, what you thought about it, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Let me know if you've read anything by Lucy Score and what your thoughts on it were. Um, you don't have to go into um, as be as descriptive as I am, just you know, kind of whether you liked it or you didn't like it. Maybe give some reasons why if you want. Um, and if you have a favorite book that you're reading right now or a book that you are reading that you are just absolutely in love with, Please put that in the comments too because I am really curious to see what y'all are reading. I will include an Amazon affiliate link for this book below and for, I will include um, the, the products that I use on my face for the, my makeup look in the description box below. They will, some of them will be uh, affiliate links to Amazon. This means that they do pay me a little bit if you use them to purchase anything. So, um, yeah, just so you're aware of that. But I will include this book in there. It's not super expensive. The books on here says $18.99. I did not pay that for this book. And I think last I checked on Amazon, this book was like $10 or $11. And it's definitely $10 or $11 worth of amusement. I will tell you that. Um, the, the typing is kind of small. It's going to take you a minute to read it. It took me about uh, two and a half weeks um, to get through all of it. But um, it's a very good book highly recommend. I can't wait to read further in the series and see what else happens. So let me know all the things in the comments below. Don't forget to go follow me over on the Instagram. Like this video if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video because you never know what kind of content is going to pop up over here on this channel. I thank y'all so, so much for watching. I love y'all very, very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!